Hey guys, it's Nick Wright and I love to travel, whether I'm heading out for work, vacation, or maybe just dropping into Kansas City to see a Chiefs game or go to our annual parade. I'm always looking for the best places to stay and that's why I turn to Airbnb. Anytime I stay in an Airbnb, I'm reminded how great of an idea it is to Airbnb your own home while you're away. Maybe you yourself have stayed in an Airbnb before and thought, you know what? I could easily turn my space into an Airbnb. Now that football season's back, lots of fans are going to be traveling to catch the game in your local city. You could Airbnb your home or extra room and make some extra money while people are in town for the game. Whether you use that money for tickets to go cheer on your favorite team or for something else entirely, your home might be worth more than you think. Find out how much at Airbnb.com slash host. Live from New York, it's a show that is welcoming all baseball fans to a special football edition of First Things yes. First. Lots of surprises and treats. And really? Yes. Wow. Lots of surprises. Oh, treats? Oh, yeah, you know treats. some stuff that he that's doesn't know. Treat. He knows that something. makes me nervous. <laughs> Anytime Brew has an excuse to get free food, most oh, notably yeah. delectable sweet food, <laughs> he's going to charge it to the company. Special one-hour show. Today, Absolutely. Ravens run wild in D.C. Can anyone stop what is now a historically great running attack? I got this new data from Josh. Meanwhile, Eagles get the win, and Sirianni goes after Eagles His fans. own fans. Not great. Uh, is the clock ticking for Phillies? Bruce going to come over to my side on this clown. <laughs> He's going to. Bruce going to like the team. I mean, it's hard to defend. He's going to no, come I, over to my side on that. this clown. <laughs> and finally, Caleb dethrones the prince in London. Is rookie of the year still on the board? That's not really the story, but mm-hmm. well, I mean, you just you, traded you out of one of your favorite in, players mm-hmm. for. He doesn't even mention other no. guys. No. You like, guys he's said. Like he's not even, you guys, I try to like be a good never teammate. Happened. You guys said that if the Jags fell to 0 3, we were going to bring the Trumpers back for one final farewell, and then the Jags were dead to us. I have honored that, and now you've mocked me for well, it. We've said a lot of things that you don't honor. Why is that <laughs> the only I'm one? Newly! 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 Don't try to rain on my Bears Super Bowl pick looking live. <laughs> don't do that. It's fair. We start with a Dallas shellacking. Cowboys get crushed by a Lions team that was out for revenge. Final score, 47-9 in the largest defeat ever at Jerry World. Jerry himself not thrilled. Take a listen. This was uh, 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 very concerning, and it was very uh, humbling, and it was very uh, 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 felt bad uh, because of all of our great fans. This was a a shocker. Uh, I thought we would do a lot of things better in that football game, and and, I think we can. We just didn't do them out there today. So uh, I don't have a lot of answers. I knew that. I personally was not shocked because (laughs) I've shown this graphic for four consecutive weeks, and I keep asking Josh to update it. So now we've updated it with the Lions. Uh, They have trailed by... More than 21 in all four games and been getting just rolled in the first half. So, Brew, what grade are you giving the Cowboys for yesterday's performance? Well, it's obviously obviously not in A, B, C. All right. I mean, as I was watching that absolute embarrassment yesterday, that utter annihilation, I was thinking to myself, it's a shame. (laughs) I didn't know you sang. I mean, because every time the Cowboys step up in class and face a non-tomato can, Mm -hmm. it's the same old song. You know what? There are guys that sing better than me. If you haven't figured it out, because the Detroit Lions, Motor City Mm -hmm. is the team that wrecked the Cowboys yesterday, there's a Motown flavor Uh, to today's grade. Mm -hmm. Fellas, take it away! You know the Cowboys, yeah, F-game. played an F game, game. said the Cowboys died, F-game. ain't that a shame, F-game. oh no, F-game. how about them Cowboys, F-game. oh, oh, oh. F game, F game, F game, woo. There it is. What? F game. 47-9. F game. So bad. 
F game. No good. F game. F game, yeah. F game. All right. F game. No, no. F game. I think you got to take back over. F game. I mean, that was just. I mean, I, I didn't know that was coming. I, I think the show, is, it's all downhill. If you were here for this. Also, I do. We're not ever going to do anything better than that. We won't. And I also must say, because today's show, instead of being its usual time of 3 p.m. Eastern following the herd, it's happening in the evening following a baseball game. Millions and millions of people are going to watch. Yes. There are a lot of very confused <laughs> baseball fans right now. Like, is this what they're doing? Yeah. Tipping, and the answer is kind of yeah. Um, all right. So, if I may pivot to the game itself, it was a disgraceful performance. <laughs> it was a disgraceful performance start to yeah. finish. And I have to give credit where it's due. One of my colleagues has been hammering this point, and I have been... Little old me? I, well, I, I, it, <laughs> he has made it a big part of his brand, mm. and it pains me to ever say this person was right. It absolutely pains me beyond belief to say this person was 100% right when they talked about the Cowboys getting blown out at home, and we can show you the numbers because it's historic. The Cowboys, this is the last 50 years. That's not good. Most points allowed in a four-game wow. stretch at home. I know every game wasn't And those blowout. probably all the, weren't blowouts. No, well, no. And so, Losses, again, you know? the, and those were, and the Cowboys, the Ravens game, I guess, wasn't a blowout, but they were being blown out early. Right. Yep. But, again, uh, 42 points a game is what they're allowing at home. A team that had won 16 consecutive home games that has now lost four consecutive home games. A team that can't run and can't stop the run. And so I would like to figuratively and literally, if I may, give some flowers to the person who's you. called this all along, wow. Kevin Thank Wilds. You. Thank you. I knew it was KW, KW, always blue. KW, <laughs> you nailed you, you told me I've that this was that. gonna happen. I've been telling I everybody. yelled at you. I didn't. I, I, I demanded you give the Cowboys more respect. No. I don't know why I nor Brew listened to you the way we should have. Well, and because you I'm the clown. I <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, you you had this one right. So yeah, you nailed it, buddy. Can I can I show you my favorite parts of the uh, game, Brew? Yeah. Because yeah. we were saying the we were sort of setting up this game as a revenge game because Dan Campbell and the Lions were still mad, and you, and someone on the set, not saying who it was was like, why do you keep showing this gosh darn play again with the spot <laughs> shadow? I'm like, this is the story. The Lions are still mad. Yes. So first play of the game, Dan Skipper reports eligible right away, first play of the game, a.k.a. telling the Cowboys, by the way, if you didn't think we're still mad, we are right. still mad. Right. Then it's 34-9, to 9, like, you know what, now let's open up the playbook. Uh, they run the uh, TD attempt to De Decker. It yeah. doesn't work. They're like, oh, shoot, is that all we're going to do? Like, nope. Let's run one to Panay Sewell, a little uh, hook and ladder. <laughs> That's later in the third. And then with four minutes left Crazy. in the game, they put Skipper out wide. Now, he has caught a touch, uh, not a touch on pass, but he has caught one pass in his life. So it wasn't necessarily, like, totally silly, but it was no, it a was nice pretty little. Silly. No, it was pretty silly. He's never lined up what? like that. Right. Wilds. He's lined up as like a that third tight end at the yeah. goal line. He's never lined up out <laughs> wide like he's, you know, David Boston. But they weren't no, ready for it. It's absolute trolling. The, that is, it, the, it is insult to injury, embarrassment to injury. And look, Nick, honestly, and I, don't, I doubt you disagree. They could have scored 60 points if oh, they really well, had just here's, totally can I tell you their foot on the gas. I disagree. Really? Only because – If they weren't doing this stuff – Okay, well, that, my, I, think they they were, the I think they were trying to score as many points as they could with style. You're right. I, if what you're if saying is if they would have just said, we're just running, we're yep. just no. going to run the ball down your throat. And Tom Brady on the call, who I thought did, I thought this was a great game by right. uh, Tom and crew. I, he seemed, he couldn't help himself but be, and we'll talk about this more at the Lions set, uh, discussion in a bit, a little annoyed at when the Lions did the first trick play and then they ended up settling the for a field goal. Oh, no, the, the one, one that you just showed. No. The first one that oh, you yeah, showed. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they ended up settling for a field goal. He's like, well – 
you screw around, now you're taking three instead of getting seven. But the Lions <laughs> clearly were like, well, we can. Right. This, this is what no is so fear. That's This the is thing. what is so The game was still a dis- lot of the game correct. to be played. And that's well, why this is why it's I mean so, it was it was midway through the third quarter. I agree with you entirely, Brew, which is why it's so demoralizing for Dallas. Right. I think there are arguments we'll talk about the Lions side of it in a bit. The Lions felt like they could treat the Cowboys the way the Chiefs for years since Mahomes has been there with Andy, have treated the Raiders. Like, we can just screw with you. Yeah. Like, we can do the ring around the rosy. We can do these things. Right. Because we, we don't. There's you, no fear. There, there's no fear of it. And so this is, I do want to ask you one Cowboys question before we move on. If we were to base it based purely on play this season, because I pushed back on the, and where I was, I said, hey, if the Cowboys win, You've got to look at them as one of the premier teams in the conference. Well, not only did they not win, they got right. annihilated. Based purely on play this season, the NFC, the top bucket, the top mm-hmm. tier would be Minnesota, Detroit, and Washington. Based purely on how they've okay. played this season. Obviously, most people would put San Francisco. Yes, but, I, but that's based some on you history. You could put Green the, Bay in there. So I was going to say the next tier is Chicago, Green Bay, Tampa Bay, San Francisco, and Atlanta. And we can parse it, but the point is the Cowboys – are with bucket three with Philly and Seattle, where it's like you've had a couple nice wins, you've had moments, but there are, based on how you've played this year, eight teams who have clearly been better than you in your own conference. Yeah, he's not saying that. No, well, I, I, that's what I said. I, I, <laughs> this is now another data point. This is, to me, the most compelling data point up to this point. Yeah, like, I mean, all of those eight certainly have yes. been better. Um, I mean, the Cowboys, like yesterday, and Dak, I got to say this. Look, they would have gotten blown out, I think, but anyway. that pick in the end zone. That pick in the end zone. Set the I mean, tone. Dak is not playing well. I'm no, sorry. That's like, correct. They ha- right. We know they don't have a run game, and he has to throw. But that pick in the end zone, if he doesn't throw that, at worst, you're down 7-6. You might be up 10-7. And who knows? And who knows? Again, I think the Detroit would have won. Maybe it wouldn't have been as a route like it was. But instead of being up possibly 10-7, you go down 10-3 and then quickly another three and out and it's 17-3. Yeah. And that was the game. At that point, you knew it was over. And then, of course, later in the game, he threw another pick. Like, Dak is playing poorly. And that was an embarrassment because, as you said, they trolled him. Yeah. They completely trolled him like, we can do whatever we want. With you. All right, let's see if there's any solutions. It was a rough birthday for Jerry Jones. Cowboys dropped to 500, but it's been a rough sledding to get there. Biggest blowout of the year of any team. Uh, here's Jerry on if there's going to be a coaching change. Take a listen. I haven't even uh, considered that. I'm not considering that. Just so you're clear, I'm but, not considering that. But you've done it Don't I, I wouldn't be a hypothetical in that matter. Do you think I'm an idiot? Do you? Okay, well, I'm not going to hypothetical with you about when I'd consider coaching change in light of the timing we're sitting here with. I'm not at all. Okay, that's a no. Uh, Brew, do the Cowboys need to make a coaching change? No. This is not on Mike McCarthy. I mean, of course, he's part of it. He's the head coach. But Mike McCarthy's proven that he can win 12 games three straight years. Like, if you give him the talent – he, he's got his warts. We all know that, and we've talked about it. But he's proven he can put not only a good team, but a very good team out on the field when he has the talent. The per- This year, he was not given the talent. Their offseason was horrendous, and we've talked about it before. But not only did Jerry not improve the team, mm-hmm. he, he let them get worse. Tyron Smith, gone. Dorrance Armstrong, gone. Uh, uh, Tyler Beattish, gone. Stephon Gilmore, Wait, gone. Tony pa- Pollard, gone. <laughs> I mean, I they could late. use some Tony <laughs> Pollard right now. Late. He looked like Tony Dorsett compared <laughs> to what they have out there. He loves that. And, and so, you know who needs to be fired? The GM. And the GM is Jerry Jones. And I'm, he needs to be fired. Not his owner. He's obviously the owner. But if he really... Was looking at this team. going to go, bro? (laughs) If he was looking at this team and the production in the offseason, he would say this GM has to go. So just give the title to a real football person and you be the owner. And you show up on Sunday in your skybox and watch the game. 
And also give up your job as voice of the Cowboys. We don't need to hear you every two or two times a week running your mouth. All right, so a couple (laughs) things. One is I actually think you might be giving Jerry a little too much credit there in that I think Jerry, the GM, might be doing a fine job. but Jerry He drafts well. No, what, yeah. Right, but Jerry, the owner, is killing him. Because the, the Cowboys offseason is not about not being able to identify players. It's not being wanting to spend money. Right. And that's the owner. You know what I mean? The, every GM across sports love to that's spend. Fair. You know, that's And fair. so I even think if you brought a new GM, that GM would run into some of the same problems the current GM is, which is Jerry doesn't want to spend the way, you know, at this point, if for this team, I still believe he l- viewed it as a – Prove you can do it, Dak, without, you know, all the weapons. Mm-hmm. The problem is they gave Dak right. the money anyway. Exactly. So, but, but they exactly. did that offseason as if they weren't going right. to, and then they did it. I think you're right in the previous uh, moment for saying, listen, Dak needs to play better. Dak, in their first loss of the year, had a couple turn, had a couple interceptions. Last night, had a couple interceptions uh, against the, the Steelers. Pulled the game out of the fire at the very end, but that was trending in the wrong direction. And CeeDee Lamb, who just got all that money, is yet to have a 100-yard game. Here's the McCarthy point, though, Wilds. It's twofold. One is, in about 10 minutes, for there's going to be a litany of reasons I torch Nick Sirianni, but one of them is going to be that team comes out flat every single week. Correct. That's a coaching thing. And so when you're at home, is the point you've been making, and just getting the door's blown off you right. week after week. That's coaching. Here's the other question. So you think they should make a coaching change? What I know is this. This is one of me and Wilde's favorite little thought experiments. Would this bum the commanders and eagles out? If you said today, hey, McCarthy fired and we're doing what the Colts did with Jeff Saturday, pulling someone off television and installing him as the head coach. Ooh. That guy's name is Bill Belichick. Are the commanders and Eagles more or less nervous? The answer is they are bummed out and way more nervous. So I don't think he's going to do it. Right. But I, what I am saying is that if your opposition, the commanders and Eagles right now are like, you're right, Jerry, stand pat. Yep. Don't change a thing. That, to me, says changing something is probably what you should do. Right. Again, I don't think it's happening. No, but, that's, but we that's, know the history that th- we talked about it when the Jets fired Sala. Yeah. These things don't work. These in-season coaching changes well, rarely, if just, ever, work. They are just three and three. But there is something odd. Like, how many times are you going to let this happen? First playoff game at home against right. the young Packers team. Blasted right away. A Saints team that no one's paying attention to. The Saints want to prove something. They blast the Cowboys. A desperate, winless Ravens team. Blast the Cowboys. A Lions team that wants revenge. Blast right. the Cowboys. Is it, at what point are you going to step in like, huh, turns out 49ers really kicked our butts here. And they're wow. To, they're gonna, Who would have thought? Gonna Where, is, that, is that game in San Francisco? I don't remember. That game the, is. Uh, Josh, at this point, it does, right? It, it no, at really this matter. point, it's I think it's better Dallas. if it's in San Francisco. <laughs> in San Fran, yeah. they, they, I mean, that might be better. It, 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 I, to I, go look, from he's not going to be the home. coach next year. The, we know that. Well, the, the question is, I don't even think, Bell, like, if, if they did do what you – or want to yeah. do what you said – I don't think Belichick's taken them midway I, through the I, season. Uh, I, I didn't think he would either. Belichick's taking money from underdog. Like he's <laughs> they, taking money. Turns out he likes the spotlight a little money. bit more he than does. we thought. Yeah, he he's like got to check his girlfriend's but travel I, schedule, but he's available. <laughs> <laughs> he's I just available. think he's probably like, rather than go out there in the middle of a season when man, I might not be able to turn around. Man, and he wants wait Shula. Wait until you have a whole offseason. Yeah, but he wants Shula. This gives him an extra, you know, five, six, seven wins. Three ones. I would call a two-year project. I'd call they it. won't give it and shouldn't give it to Zimmer. No, that defense, that defense is a, a disaster. Right. You're going to so, give it to Schottenheimer? No, no, no. no I mean that's, that's what I'm thing. saying. It, it will have Saturday. to be somebody. Jeff Saturday won his first game. Belichick comes in, beats the Niners. Oh, yeah, but then it was down. <laughs> yeah, it was okay. down. All right. Meanwhile, the Lions looked unstoppable. Jared Goff goes for 315 and three touchdowns. Montgomery and Gibbs added two touchdowns. Defense was incredible, but did lose Aiden Hutchinson Oof. for the year. Now, news from Dallas that he had emergency surgery yesterday uh, after the game. The Lions locker room totally locked in. Take a listen. This is the tightest this group has been. This is the tightest this 2024 team has been. We found something special last year, man. I felt it going into this game. Man, it's like we're in here together. 
And I don't feel people pulling us away. We're not, nobody's coming out of that circle, man. That's a great win. Break it down. Hey, real Let's quick, go. real quick, real quick. Our head coach is our rock now. No We're in Dallas in his place where he played game ball. <laughs> That's pretty good. Pretty good. Wild. Yeah. Can I tell Wilds, how close to getting misty eyed? Oh, I got, well, I watched it a few times. Yeah. You cried the first yeah. time. Yeah. So I got fired up. When yeah. Goff gets it back, I'm like, here, Goff. Uh, with the Lions solidified as the team to beat in the NFC, bro. Well, I probably would say yes, but Aiden Hutchinson, the injury, I don't, you can't overstate the value. Show the numbers, value. guys. The, yeah, he go, keep going, team. Brew. They can. I mean, he's up. not only obviously he was playing like the best defensive player in the league. I mean, he's done. What he the and rest Chris of the team Jones, right? And, and seven and a half sacks leads the league, yeah. and you see it. They, I mean, they don't get many without yeah. him, and so they're not going to have that pass rush. Their defense, while it's solid and good with him, it is the weak link on their team. Offensively, they can do it all. They've got the run game. They can throw the ball. They've got skill position. The offensive line is great. But I, I don't – in fact, I, I don't know which way I'll go, but right now I'm kind of leaning – they play Minnesota this week. I'm leaning toward Minnesota. So, so I would not say so, – they're clearly a contender, absolutely, but no. So the last game bye. they played before the bye, the question we asked is, do they have an argument they're the best team in the NFC? The answer was yes then, that they had the argument. Now they clearly, to me, right now have the – with I understand the Vikings are undefeated. I think – all things considered, the Lions have not only the best argument, but they are the team. The Even current, without Hutchinson? It, it, yes, for the time being. The team to beat in the NFC. Here's what I will caution. I will caution two things. One is this. Uh, they are also a game and a half out of being in last place in their own division. That division is 16-4 and four against the rest of the NFL. One and one against itself, obviously. Which, but the one and one against itself means none of the divisional games have happened. Mm -hmm. Minnesota Green Bay's happened and every other one. So you have all these four win teams. The four best point differentials in football is the NFC North. Yep. One, two, three, four. So that is a caution that one of these teams is going to miss the playoffs entirely. I don't think it's going to be Detroit, but they're going to beat each other up. The other one is this. It's this little football gods thing. I hope you have 30 more trick plays. Because they, they, there were a few of those things that I personally would have maybe kept in reserve to, to use in a critical situation or in a game we're trailing where we need a spark. They wanted to really stick it to Dallas. I don't know how many I bet hook and laterals more. to Pene Sewell you have in the I bag. Think, I, I don't think, think they're running that. Yeah, I don't think okay. they're running that against... Like a, a team well, they, they respect. They, uh, okay. I mean, I, I think, I think they, they did it just to okay. embarrass the Cowboys. Okay, maybe. I think he's got a lot. All right. Ben Johnson's got a whole. I understand. He's got a whole folder when he goes to a new team that he isn't <laughs> broken out yet. Uh, are the Ravens the scariest team in the AFC? That's next on FS1, the Fox this Sports Channel on Sirius XM. Brew, this was magnificent. <laughs> they brought it, too. Hey guys, it's Nick Wright, and I love to travel. Whether I'm heading out for work, vacation, or maybe just dropping into Kansas City to see a Chiefs game or go to our annual parade, I'm always looking for the best places to stay, and that's why I turn to Airbnb. Anytime I stay in an Airbnb, I'm reminded how great of an idea it is to Airbnb your own home while you're away. Maybe you yourself have stayed in an Airbnb before and thought, you know what? I could easily turn my space into an Airbnb. Now that football season's back, lots of fans are going to be traveling to catch the game in your local city. You could Airbnb your home or extra room and make some extra money while people are in town for the game. Whether you use that money for tickets to go cheer on your favorite team or for something else entirely, your home might be worth more than you think. Find out how much at Airbnb.com slash host. Welcome back to the show. Coach Mangini is here. Ravens win their fourth game in a row, this time over the Commanders. Offense humming on all fronts, 484 total yards of offense, bro. Lamar and Zay Flowers cooking. Lamar at 323 passing yards. Derrick Henry added 130-plus on the ground and two touchdowns. Here's Derrick Henry. Take a listen. I feel like everything was, was working. It's kind of like pick your poison. Everybody did a great job uh, being locked in and executing. You know, this 
hats off everybody on offense. It's great. You got so many guys that can make plays. A lot of guys are getting chances to get the ball and um, be able to you know, showcase their talents. That's, just, that's what you want as offense is everybody being dynamic, having playmakers who can make plays on any, any side of the, the, the field. Basically, we could do anything we wanted to out there. <laughs> uh, Brew, how dangerous are your Ravens? I mean, look, they, they've got the best. Hold on. No purple. You spent all your time with the most guys. The Cowboys no colors purple on. Jordans today. <laughs> no, no, I no. am shocked. It was a great win. I'm it was a great shocked. win, but okay. but no, I can't do it every okay, every week. They can't buy me new Jordans every every week. <laughs> you can wear but the same the pair. Just wear yeah, the purple. I'm open to it if you okay, do. Okay, go ahead. Um, Sorry. They got the best running quarterback ever, and the best running back of the past decade. And so yes, off. Yes. And and I think Lamar is throwing the football better than ever. Like, he, I mean, he's averaging over 250 yards a game passing, which is the first time he's ever done that. And I, I just think his accuracy, I know I don't know if his percentage is the highest, but I think he's he looks better than ever in the pocket to that. me. Um, what I want to see is defense. And yesterday I was encouraged. And I know mm -hmm. Jaden Daniels had a great game. But they held what had been the highest scoring team in the league to just 23 points. And on third down, and we, they didn't only have 52 yards rushing, but Brian Robinson wasn't there. But still, on third down, they held the commanders to 4 of 12 as far as converting. Commanders are second, even with what happened yesterday, they're second in the league in third down conversion. So to hold them to 4 of 12, I thought was impressive. And look, and I'm not trying to start at uh, – I thought the Ravens were the best team in football last year. Yeah. And I think they they you can make an argument, obviously they lost to the Chiefs this year, but that they looking like that now. They just got to – they can't – like, to me, this whole year is about remembering your identity and solidifying that, mm -hmm. which they're, they're doing, improving defensively, cutting down the turnover, the silly self-inflicted wounds, a lot of penalties, they, they do that, and just keeping your cool. Because all of those things killed them against the Chiefs in the other, AFC title game. One other thing killed them. That's, that's what it's all about. One other thing killed them. The same thing that killed them all the previous years in the playoffs, which was their quarterback was terrible. He, he, right. And so, and like, and so listen, listen, I, look, I agree with you. Then the regular season last year, the Ravens were the best team. They are the best team in the league in the regular season in 2019 as well. The other year, Lamar won MVP. And I agree with you that I think Lamar, coach, might disagree, is playing at a higher level than he's played at any point in his career. I agree. 2019 was weird in that he had three – I looked it up today. He had three five-touchdown pass games where he completed 17 or fewer passes. So yeah, three times – three crazy. times where it was like, it was like one in every three passes right. he threw. So that year he threw for 200 yards a game, right. but he threw at 36 touchdowns. It was mm – -hmm. that. Was, so I agree with all of that. But how dangerous are the Ravens? The answer is – the most dangerous team imaginable until the games really matter. And I know, and I listen, I know well, I'm the bad argue, guy for this, but nobody cares. Well, that's been the this is, they gotta prove this it. is what everyone thinks about Joel Embiid. It's what everybody used to think about James Harden when he was a star player. Nobody was a jerk for saying it. But because Bill Polian had a terrible take about Lamar seven years ago, now you, you can't say what I think is clear to a lot of people, which is until he can be right now, he should be if there's if it's in a vacuum. If not, no history matters, he's the league MVP again. He well, is – he's – like, right. all of those things are true, but if I'm if I'm thinking of teams that scare me, that who roots for the best team in the league, I would say the team we just talked about, Detroit, San Francisco, Cincinnati, Ugh. Buffalo. Take Cincinnati out if you don't okay. care. Buffalo, you're Houston. You're talking about teams that could have a chance in your teams mind. That, teams that if you're like, hey, Nick, you can play – the Chiefs in the playoffs can play Baltimore or – those teams I just listed, I'd say, give me Baltimore. Can, can we just put a little cold water on this? They, they weren't playing the 85 Bears yesterday. <laughs> oh, oh okay? coach like, is going further well, in that direction. Well, I'm just saying. 500 yards. I, no, I, I get it, but but not a lot of people pick Washington to be any good or go to the playoffs except for, you know, some people. Coach. <laughs> but, but still, they have problems defensively. And I think, I think, Chris, you made a very important point. You said he's throwing the ball better than he's ever thrown in his career. Okay, that's the thinking right there that's going to get him beat in the playoffs. That's the thinking right there that's going to come back at some point to bite him because their identity is to run the ball first 
and they've they've added to that that mix with with what Derrick Henry brings to to the table, right. and then build everything off of that. But when you start transitioning to okay, we're going to be a throw first because Lamar is throwing the ball so well. That's when they historically have gotten into trouble and underachieved. Because I know we've been fearing that, but that hasn't happened. They're still number one in rushing percentage. Yards per game, they're, gosh darn it, they're running for 205 yards per game. Yards per rush, their first is the best by any team in uh, Super Bowl era. And the reason, I know we didn't want to do a Chiefs versus Ravens thing. I, I fought against it, and then during the segment, I was like, you know it would be good if we did? Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. This guy, is, uh, you know, I knew information. <laughs> the first game, it was a fair take to say, you know what, Derrick Henry? A little bit too much tread on the tires. He had 13 carries for 46 yards. And since then, 84 yards, 151 yards, 199, 92, 132, two touchdowns the other day. So he's on pace for almost 2,000 yards. Yeah. This is very similar to, we're going to do Caleb later, the trajectory of Caleb. It doesn't make any sense for an older running back to get better every game, but Either he's finding the holes or they're figuring out Their how to line. utilize him better. But he gets better and better. Well, the, the Chiefs the got him at a improved. nice time. The, first time putting on the Ravens jersey and turning okay, him loose. Okay, maybe that's what happened. Or maybe one, or the, Lamar was great in that game. No, he wasn't. No. Like, I again, I can, I, I'll just wear it that people are going to view me judging Lamar Jackson the way we've ju view, judged every athlete of my lifetime, which is if you are perpetually an A-plus in the regular season yeah. and then Without fail, every time you've been in the postseason, you've been a C- minus or worse. And every time your team has failed to play to its seed and you've been at the center of it, we are going to look at you with a skeptical eye until that changes. We, we do it to Dak Prescott. Nobody cares. We do it to every NBA star ever. Nobody cares. For, but, but I do think, Nick, in fairness to him last year, they didn't call a lot of runs right. in that game. They did, when, when, yes, when they, they let. They said the MVP go score twenty well, points, but, and he but, couldn't. But that's about understanding who you are and what you're really good at. And when you want to suddenly transition to something else, and you're shocked that it doesn't work. Can I, I, oh, wait. we didn't want to do Ravens Chiefs. Oh, uh, you we want to do, do Ravens? No, no, we got to do Sirianni. Okay. Oh. All right. Oh yeah. Nick for tomorrow. Still. Stay tuned for tomorrow. We'll be on at three o'clock. <laughs> Here, Bruce Tate. Uh, head to Philly where the Eagles uh, managed to get a W over the Browns. Philly faithful were giving Sirianni an earful. And then he gave it right back. Oddly, here he is on the interaction post game. And then they kind of got some feedback from the guys. Is the sense of like, we need, we need you back, Nick. We need, we need your, we need your energy. We need your, your, your focus. We need your like. I've gotten that from a couple players. And um, you know, when I'm when I'm operating, and having fun, I think that 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 uh, breeds to the rest of the football team. Um, you know, if I want the guys to celebrate. Um, and be themselves after um, big plays, then I should probably do that myself, right? Um, now there's times for that and there's times not for that. I have to have wisdom and, and discernment of when to do that and when not to do that. <laughs> okay. well, I mean, this no, guy just no can't, chance story this guy yeah. just can't be the leader of an NFL team. I'm sorry. You wouldn't let him be the leader of your car dealership. If, 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 you're, if your top sales guy had, you know, after a great, uh, great open to his career selling U uh, GMCs or whatever, we, whatever car it is, yeah. has a rough year, and then he's like, all right, you know what? I'm going to take a week off, get back to who I am. And he shows up his first day. He has shaved his head. He's screaming at the customers. He's bad that day. And then for his performance review, brings his kids so you can't yell at him. You'd say, okay, we've got a problem. There have been 91 wins in the NFL this year. That win the Eagles just had probably about the 88th best. Yeah. Like you squeaked one out against the Browns, who are playing a, a quarterback a that their coach obviously doesn't want to play, but has no choice but to play. That's the team you squeaked by, and you screamed at your own fans for it. And the kids at a press conference is allowed if you are soaked in champagne or have just been given an award. Not when you know you're about to be hounded <laughs> by a notoriously <laughs> tough media. And so, I ha listen, Philly, you won the game. I'm happy for you. But everyone knows where this Sirianni story is ending. And the sooner they admit it, the better off the Eagles will be. I think the kid at the press conference was the best call of the game. Well, well yeah, because it <laughs> shielded it right. Strategically, right. Yeah, I mean, right. But it's, 
But you, you go, you know, you go on the bye, you get your three stars back, and you still don't score in the first quarter, which is Show obviously that. It was five games, a new Philly record. So you got that problem, and then you have the field goal blocked for a touchdown, and you're promising changes. And really, the and that's only that's a huge problem, right? Yeah, Zero. Yeah, it's a, it's it. Look, <laughs> it was something you it, were supposed to fix. It's a huge problem, and, yeah. and and you you struggle with it. And I thought that some of that struggle was because he was missing his two star receivers. But now we we have a week off. You, you should have spent a lot of time trying to address that, and you get the same result. It's and and now you're antagonizing your own fans. Your own fans. So right. when anything bad happens in that stadium. It's just going to light them up against right. the Looking group. Like You're becoming the distraction that you don't want to have your players create. It's There were only two football positives to take out of it. Look, a win is a win. They yes. need to stack wins, so that was good. But A.J. Brown's play was, He's awesome. was great. And the fact that Jalen Hurts played a clean game. Yeah. Like, what, first nine or ten games? Without without first a turnover. time without a turnover. But for Sirianni, look, Sirianni cannot strike the balance. Because we could see as the supernatural funk has been going on, right? Yeah. And even this season, he was losing himself. Like these last few weeks at press conferences, he was not confident. He was not sure of himself. He's over explaining this. Like he was lost. And, and I, I don't doubt maybe some players did say, look, you have to be yourself. But you also have to be mature and understand you know, I you I think the shaved head was a part of him being like, you know what, I'm gonna be myself again. You don't again. say, right? Of and course so, it was. Right. So I, he has he cannot figure out how to strike. Does the shaved head have some symbolism I'm missing? No, no. Like, I just no, think just, he was like, you know so what, I'm missing, isn't it? That, I, mean, I just don't know what else it could be. I mean, what are the instances of folks? who randomly across American contemporary sports and pop culture don't you dare randomly showed up I'm not gonna name spot. names it's usually after Sh- a break I'm just gonna say shaved their head and we're like you know what that was the moment we knew they really had it together Can well, I that's say, typically when you, not what when it you symbolizes. do these things coach as a head coach you gotta win like big <laughs> And that's the only – that protected him his first few year, you years got, with the team. You've got to win. He needs to be cheering against the Jets tonight because if this experiment works in New York where they fire the head coach and the Jets light it up, yeah. I'd say Dallas, I'd say him, I'd say Jacksonville, all those owners are going to be like, oh, that, that, that plan worked out pretty well for New York. So, yeah, cheer against the Jets. It's great, a great take. take. It's a take. great take. It's a great take. <laughs> By the way, Coach hasn't been here since he nailed the Jets getting embarrassed in England and yeah, the coach crushing. being fired because of it take. They, the internet they really, you don't, you're not on the internet, but the internet <laughs> the really liked it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're a star of the internet. Uh, uh, coming up next, <laughs> Caleb back in the Rookie of the Year race. Oh, next. Never left. <laughs> Bears toppled Jacksonville in London. Caleb dethrones the Prince. Four touchdowns, 124 passer rating. Here's Caleb postgame. Offensive line, coaching, um, progress, um, the leadership on this team. Um, you know, the, the, for me, the constant mindset of keep going. Um, um, and then, uh, you know, I think um, us getting out there and getting our momentum going, um, us getting out there and executing, us believing in each other um, is, is, is what you credit it to. Solid. Uh, first three games, not great. Last three games, pretty, ga- gr- pretty great. Has the defense been excellent? No, but he doesn't get to make the schedule. Oh, you, uh, the opposing defense. defense. Opposing He's defense. Playing. Yeah, his defense has been excellent, yes. and right. the opposing, the opposing defenses, defenses have been terrible. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, has Caleb officially arrived? Oh, you know he's arrived. KW. There we go. And See this that. is a little bittersweet for me, of course, because his arrival signifies the departure of my beloved Prince, the further departure. And so, Wilds, I have a question for you. Yeah, we've said goodbye to the Prince several times. No, I understand, but, but this feels more symbolic. Number one pick, both my guys, both, like, sure. there were, you know, Brood it hasn't been a big fan of either one of them, all these no, things. I, like I, Caleb, you, I you didn't, didn't you like the You don't like the cut wilds. of his jib. Um, no, he's improved. Hey, let me ask he's you a improved. question, Wilds. What do you call the person next in line for the throne? What's the name for that person? The heir? No, well, no, yeah, but the, uh, Jaden. No, the the <laughs> prince is what I always thought it was. Oh yeah, sorry. I'm but not. it turns out, oh, you know, there could be multiple oh, princes. There's only on one this. crown prince. Oh, the crown. And the oh, crown oh, prince, oh, Caleb. <laughs> oh my! Oh my! Oh, for for 
Peter the Prince, they but Cameron went home. to London and stole his lands and titles. <laughs> what? Oh my! How things have changed. Where, where is the loyalty? Where is the loyalty? I mean, I love like, these guys. I, mean, I love them too. It turns out I my Trevor monarchical fans. history was incorrect. I was thinking Prince meant he was the next one. Yeah. But younger brothers, other things. There's uh, only one crown prince. Of course, we know the king is Patrick Mahomes and the heir apparent. Yes, he's arrived. We all know it. You all saw it. He had what, coach? S ten rough quarters of football before he started doing all the things you asked him to do. Not as many procedural errors. Oh, nice. Figuring out the, the pre-snap organization. Boys in the pocket. Boys in the pocket. <laughs> delivering dimes. And now, after a bye, he gets to go T take on Jaden. He'll win that game. Wilds going to be like, well, actually, that's four straight bad defenses he's cooked and up. And then the Cardinals. And then the Cardinals. <laughs> and oh my, as Brew would say, oh my. So yes, he has officially arrived. By going to England, he has officially arrived. Look, go ahead, Cole. I First of all, isn't there like a Drake curse with sports? There might be a right curse with no, quarterbacks. Oh, oh, yeah, Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> it's really hurt. We, we it's sat, really hurt, Patrick Mahomes. We sat Mom. through years of the prince that was promised, and now you just dropped now him now like a bad hat. I know. I he, got like, a he's gone, and now you're trying to give that nickname to this guy? Right. I felt like Caleb really had a chance <laughs> yeah, to, nice. to skyrocket until Nick right, started okay. giving him the nickname. But your real analysis now is thinking, you like him. Well, here's what I liked. I, I like the fact that every every play doesn't have to be a big play. Yes. He's taking what what's there. There's so much more poise in terms of 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 going through his read progression. I thought the two throws there to Keenan Allen were awesome. Yeah. Like awesome. really, yeah. They were they were the throws that you saw in college that that made you say wow and 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 appreciate yeah. his talent. And so yeah. to see those types of throws without the all the other stuff that, that, that's been going on. And then I thought his interview was also showed a lot of maturity. That That's what I'm talking about, Coach, because I said, look. That was what he had been didn't week, like. Yeah, the, like you said, the cut of his jib, yeah. the way he was acting. I think he's last few weeks he's shown a lot more maturity and looks great on the podium, the things he's saying. I'm going to give him major credit, though, because, look, you can say Jaden, even C.J. Stroud last year, they came out of the gate, like, right away, and they were like, oh, they're ready for the NFL. We, he, first couple games, struggled yeah. to adjust this quickly. You generally don't see, like, you might see a guy have a bad half season and then, like Jordan Love last year, then start to adjust. This guy, like, to, for him to improve over the past what few games? Like it was three games, I basically. Know, I don't want He got better. Why do I? I'm not I don't want to play this role. Do it, do it wild. I'm just saying he's improved. Everyone looks good against Jacksonville. That's no, do but they, the last I don't two want games four he's played touchdowns. With. So I'm not saying he's going. I don't be want all to be pro. that guy. I agree. I I agree with you, but the schedule. Okay. He's improved as the schedule but, has. Yeah, but that's but that wild. But that's part proved. of sometimes. That's why before the year, I know. we talk about strength of schedule. We talk about teams that have a softer I path. I know. And well, as look, bad they, as they all got to play those division it, teams. Yes, all, it, it, all four it, and teams. So. The most, the first ever rookie game with four touchdowns and this high of a completion percentage on that many attempts. First time any rookie ever. Jacksonville's not the worst defense any rookie's ever played. He's clearly on the ascent. He's clearly the crown prince, which is why, gentlemen, play us off, if you would. It's so nice. Got so lucky there. Right guys. as the prince They're was back. coming down, uh, Kale, uh, I'm just yeah, my friends get to come back. It's great. The Bears colors look awesome on their back. If you like first things first, check out the audio version. It's interesting. It, it's probably a little confusing days like today. No, it's still you good. You can't I see the, like, who's singing well, of the guys watch right. who's who's playing the sure. trumpets. They're going to think it was me <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> time. Frostiest segment in all of sports. Mahomes oh. found a lot of movement here. How probably high not at the top. can Caleb soar? Now, see, it's going mean, to get out of control. Yeah. What do you mean? Be, it's gonna be oh, awesome. I'm sorry. Oh, you're going to doubt no. Mahomes Mountain's ability to rank Caleb Williams when we have yeah, the foresight yeah. to have him where we did. He's arguing for the position of strength right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, in New York last night, uh, Joe Burrow sprung a 47-yard run for a touchdown and hung on in the fourth to down Danny Dimes and the Giants 17-7. to <laughs> Here's Burrow posting. We really needed it. Uh, 
you know, don't want to say we would have been out of it if we had lost, but uh, we'd be we'd be scratching and clawing for the rest of the year. We still really are, but it's good to get a win. Um, great to see our de- defense step up like that. Uh, they've taken some heat the last couple weeks, but they played awesome today. Nothing like a date with Danny Dimes to solve any defensive woes. <laughs> More or less faith in Cincinnati after the win. A touch less. Oof. But I had a lot of faith in them. That's true. You know, uh, yeah. Now, the, so here's the deal. Defensive line got healthier and looked better. Uh, but the reason – I don't think that defense is going to be anything more than at best below average. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think their hope is to get to just below average. The offense has to be awesome. Right. And the one thing the Giants have is a very good defensive front, even though Thibodeau yeah. wasn't there – and it truly, truly disrupted the Bengals throughout the night. And that was, I was talking about how bad the, you know, the, the Eagles having one of the five worst wins of the year. This is not a great win, the way it played it out. Lost, the I mean, Giants could have gotten close yes, with that they, fumble. There, there were a lot of things. And so a touch less, but that's because I had so much in them before. But this was an ugly, ugly win for them. I, I, I feel the same way. I mean, it's less. It's a little bit less. At the end of the day, though, it was a win they needed. Their two wins have not been good, Carolina and then this. But uh, this defense of the Giants held Washington to 21, Seattle to 20, Dallas to 20. So the Giants' defense is legit. pretty good, yeah. Bengals in Cleveland next, so maybe get another win. Uh, We'll be here tomorrow, 3 o'clock. See you then.